Hello everyone. The title of this video is Rationalize a One-Term Denominator. All right. Now every question I'm going to be going over, every exercise, is taken directly from a free online textbook at openstacks.org. It is their Intermediate Algebra 2nd Edition text. And the exercises I'm going to be going over in this particular video are under the heading Rationalize a One-Term Denominator. And I'm going to be going over just the even-numbered exercises in this text. You may notice that the odd-numbered problems have links on them where you can click on the link and it'll take you to the solutions. So I'm going to be working on the, the questions that don't have solutions in the book. And I will be putting time stamps for each exercise I do in the description of the video below. Um, example 1 will correspond to exercise 260. Example 2 will be number 262 and then 264 all the way up to number 270. All right, again, just the even numbered problems. So if you'd like to use the timestamps to you know, navigate the video, please do. Also, a request I'd like to make is that whenever I bring up a new problem or start a new part of a question, pause the video and try to work on it yourself before you watch me do it. Because if you're just watching me do these things and not practicing on your own, chances are you're not learning all that much. All right. So the first question is you know, exercise 260. And I have that written out here. All right, so again, this is I'm calling this example one and writing down you know the exercise from the text that this this is coming from, right? Number 260. And in every of the every single one of these exercises, we're asked to rationalize the denominator. Now, what does that mean? That means write an equivalent expression. All right. We're going to write an equivalent expression in which there is no radical in in a denominator. All right. Right, an equivalent expression in which there is no radical, no root in the denominator. That's what it means to rationalize the denominator. Okay, so for all these examples, I feel like it's pretty simple, but that's just me. Um, so let me start here with you know eight divided by the square root of three. So this you know this has a radical in the denominator, right? A root in the denominator, the square root of three. So very simply, you just need to, you know, we're trying to write an equivalent expression. I'm going to multiply the numerator and denominator by the same thing. Right? Because if you remember, if you multiply the numerator and, den and denominator by the same number, you don't change the value. It's like you're multiplying by 1. And uh, I want to multiply by something that will get rid of the square root in the denominator. So it's the square root of 3. Now that's 3 of the first power. I want to multiply by another square root so that we end up with the square root of a perfect square. Right? And if it's cube roots we want perfect cubes and if it's fourth roots we want perfect fourth powers and so on. But follow me here. We got 3 to the first here so I just need one more factor of 3 to get 3 squared, right, to get a perfect square. So I'm going to multiply the denominator by the square root of 3 again 
And if I multiply the denominator by the square root of 3, right, I must also multiply the numerator by the square root of 3. All right, so this expression I started with, 8 divided by the square root of 3, is equivalent to 8 times the square root of 3, which is written just like that, because right, one factor isn't a radical, the other factor is a radical. You can't, don't make that the square root of 24, right? They're not both square root factors. So it's just 8 times the square root of 3 in the numerator, and then the square root of 3 times the square root of 3 is, you know, the square root of 9, but that's now, right, that's now a nice perfect square in the radicand. And the square root of a perfect square simplifies quite nicely. Square root of 9 is just, you know, 3. So we have 8 times the square root of 3 in the numerator uh, divided by 3 in the denominator. And now they would say that this is you know, an expression for which we have rationalized the denominator. Right, the denominator no longer has a radical, no longer has a root. All right, it's just 3. Now, I'm going to, uh, as you've seen me do in other videos, I'm going to test this. You know, make sure that my final expression actually is equivalent to the one we started with by uh, using a calculator. Why not? All right, so I have a TI-84 plus simulator on my computer. Right, there it is. And I'll enter the expression we started with, which was 8 divided by the square root of 3. And see what we get. All right, so we get 4.618802154, you know, right, and so on. All right, now I'm going to enter the expression I ended up with with this you know, rationalized denominator. So it was 8 times the square root of 3 and then that number divided by 3. And oh look, it is the same number. So I, I did a good job. All right. All right, so we have an equivalent expression with a denominator that doesn't have a radical. Right? That's, that's, all that, what, that's all they want when they're asking you to rationalize the denominator. All right, right, an equivalent expression with a denominator that doesn't have a radical. All right, so part B, same thing. See, there's a denominator in a radical, right? This is the square root of 7 fortieths. There's a denominator inside a radical. Don't, don't want that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the, you know, the quotient property. Remember, the square root of a fraction I can break up to the square root of the numerator divided by the square root of the denominator. All right. Now, something I personally like doing, you know, you can multiply by the square root of 40 in the numerator and denominator right now, but I like to simplify my radicals and then rationalize. So this is the square root of 7 in the numerator, divided by, now remember the square root of 40, that's the square root of 4 times the square root of 10, right, and that's, that's 2 times the square root of 10. All right, so then to get rid of the radical, right, to get rid of the square root of 10, I would only have to multiply by the square root of 10, right, instead of the square root of 40. Right? I only do that just to make some numbers smaller. So to rationalize the denominator, right, I'm going to multiply by the square root of 10. Right, that will give me the square root of 10 squared, right? the square root of a perfect square in the denominator. And do the same to the numerator. right? So I multiply the numerator by the square root of 10 as well. Now the square root times square root I can put together with the product property. right? These are both radicals. That's the square root of 70 in the numerator divided by and then 2 times you know only the square roots get multiplied 2 times the square root of 10 times the square root of 10 that's 2 times the square root of 100 
which is just 10. So I have the square root of 70 in the numerator divided by 2 times 10, which is 20 in the denominator. Now the denominator is rationalized. Right, there's no more radical in the denominator. But of course we also have to simplify any radicals we see. You know, the square root of 70, that 7 times 10 or 7 times 2 times 5, there are no perfect squares that go into 70 evenly. So this is it. This is it right here. The square root of 70 divided by 20 is the same number as the square root of 7 fortieths, but you know, with a rationalized denominator a denominator without a radical. Right, and once again, just just for this first page, um, maybe maybe some problems later on with different roots, cube roots, fourth roots, uh, I'm going to check with a calculator. Uh, for the rest of them, for most of them, I'll leave it to you. you check on your own. So the original expression I was given was, you know, the square root of 7 fortieths, right, and 7 fortieths was all inside the square root there. Got 0 0.4183300133, da 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 da. Right. And let's see if that's actually equivalent to this final expression I got with this, you know, rationalized denominator. So I got the square root of 70 in the numerator, get out of there, divided by, and then 20 in the denominator. And oh yes, indeed, it is the same number. Great. All right, and that's that's all I'm doing. All right, that's that's all. That's all we're doing. All right. So now, part C. All right. Same thing. All right. Same thing. But this time there's a variable involved. Now remember, um, I've said this in other videos as well, whenever we have expressions with variables involved, we should state the domain of the expression somewhere. You know, what, what values are allowed to be plugged in for that variable. Now if you recall, you know, even roots, even roots, square roots, fourth roots, sixth roots, etc. We want to deal with real numbers so the, the radicand can't be negative. So 2 times y can't be negative. Meaning that y can't be negative. Right? So y has to be positive here. Right, I'm just writing that off to the side. y has to be a number greater than 0. Um, it can't be equal to 0 because then you'd be dividing by 0. You'd have 0 in the denominator. right? So y has to be positive straight away. Alright, so if y is positive, now I can do the rationalization. Right, we have the square root, uh, I'm going to multiply the square root of 2y down here by the square root of 2y. You know, the, and the reason I'm doing this is, you know, the square root of 2y is already as simple as it gets. Right? So I don't, I just need one more 2 and one more y to get 2 squared and y squared, right, to get perfect squares. And if I'm multiplying the denominator by the square root of 2y, I must also do the same to the numerator. All right, so we have 8 times the square root of 2y in the numerator divided by, and then just 2, I hope you understand this, this is going to be 2y in the denominator, right? It will be the square root of 4y squared, which will be 2y, and there's no need for absolute values here because we already said that y has to be positive. Right, now I'm not totally done. All right, we have some common factors. All right, the numerator and denominator do have a common factor. 2 goes into 8 four times. Right? If I divide both of those by 2, you get 4 over 1. So the numerator ends up being 4 times the square root of 2y divided by, and then the denominator is just 1 times y, or y. Right? And there you go. Now, if you'd like to test this out, just replace y with any number that's positive. Plug it in the original expression, 
plug it in this final expression, and you'll see that you get the same result. An easy example would be if y were 2. I can do this out loud. If y were 2, you'd have 8 divided by the square root of 4, so 8 divided by 2, which is 4. The original expression would have a value of 4. And if y were 2, you'd have 4 times the square root of 4, which is, you know, 4 times 2 is 8, divided by 2 is 4 again. All right. The value of both the original and final expression would be 4 if y were 2. Uh, and if y were 1, you know, both, both of these would have the same value as 8 divided by the square root of 2, whatever that is. But just test it out. You know, replace y with any positive number, and the value of the original expression should be the same as the value of this final expression with the rationalized denominator, right? that denominator without a radical. Okay, so yeah, and this is all I'm doing. Now, now uh, just pay attention to the roots, though. You know, all these problems in question one, the denominator had a square root. So I was looking to make perfect squares. Right. Um, we'll see later in the video some problems where the denominator has a cube root or a fourth root. All right, so you're going to be looking to make perfect cubes or perfect fourth powers in those cases. All right, example two corresponds to number 262 in the text. Same stuff, all right? All square roots on this page again. All right, so this is just going to be very much like the, 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 the number one, all right? So first we have four divided by the square root of five. I'm asked to rationalize the denominator. So I multiply the numerator and denominator by, you know, just, just the square root of 5. Very easy. That way I get 5 squared, a perfect square. And do the same to the numerator, right? 4 times the square root of 5. So I end up with the numerator is 4 times the square root of 5, which would stay that way, right? And then the square root of 25, which again, just, just, just 5 down there, right? You have a perfect square. And there you go. That's it. There's an equivalent expression uh, to the number I was originally given with a rationalized denominator. 4 times the square root of 5 divided by 5. Okay. Next, uh, next question. Once again, I have a denominator in a radical. right? So I want to break this up. This is the square root of 27 divided by the square root of 80. All right, and before I go and rationalize, I'm going to simplify these radicals first. Now, again, I'm hoping you know how to simplify radicals. I'm just going to talk it out. This would be the square root of 9 times the square root of 3. So 3 times the square root of 3 in the numerator. And then this is the square root of 16 times the square root of 5, right, the square root of 80, so 4 times the square root of 5 in the denominator. All right. And then after simplifying the radicals, you know, I can, I can then do the, the rationalization. All right, so I'm going to multiply the numerator and denominator. I, I want to get rid of the square root of 5 in the denominator. Well, that would just involve multiplying by another square root of 5, right? Just like in part A of number 2. So I'll have the square root of 25, which will just be 5, and then the radical will be gone. And I do the same thing to the numerator, multiply by the square root of 5. Okay. So now the numerator is 3 times the square root of 3 times the square root of 5. That would be 3 times the square root of 15. You can multiply the two radicals using the product property for radicals. Divided by 4 times 5. Right? Remember the square root of 5 times the square root of 5 is just going to be 5. So I have 4 times 5, which is 20. And 3 and 20 don't have a common factor, so I'm done. All right, this is as simple as it gets, and also having a rationalized denominator. And once again, double check with the calculator. You know, take the square root of 27 80ths, 
punch in 3 times the square root of 15, then you know, divide it by 20, and you should get the same value. All right, then in part C, we have a variable, right, this Q. And uh, like in part C of number 1, Q has to be a positive number here. Q has to be greater than 0 in order for us to be dealing with real numbers. Um, you know, it can't be equal to 0 because then you'd have a denominator of 0. can't be negative because you'd have the square root of a negative, which wouldn't be real. All right, so Q has to be positive. Now if Q is positive, we can continue. Uh, now the square root of 6Q doesn't simplify any further, so I'm just going to go in and rationalize now. Right, so I'm multiplying the numerator and denominator by the square root. You know, I need another 6 and another Q to get perfect squares, right? 6 squared and Q squared. And I do the same thing to the numerator, multiply by the square root of 6Q. Alright. So the numerator is 18 times the square root of 6Q divided by, and then the square root of 6Q times the square root of 6Q would just be 6Q. Right. And then we have common factors, right? The numerator and denominator, you know, if I divide by 6 in the numerator and denominator, I get 1 here and 3 here. Right. They had a common factor of 6. So when all said and done, and all simplified, numerator, we have 3 times the square root of 6Q. And divided by, in the denominator, we just have 1 times Q, or just Q. Wonderful. Alright, and then once again, if you want to test this out, just replace Q with some positive number. Plug it into the original expression, plug it into this final expression for Q, and you'll see you get the same value, right, you know, no matter what you plugged in for Q. All right. Great. Alright, so, so far in numbers 1 and 2, we've been, you know, rationalizing denominators with a square root trying to make perfect squares. Well, the next page we have Q roots in the denominator. All right. So number three, which corresponds to number 264 in the text, part A, you know, we have one divided by the Q root of three. So again, if I want to rationalize, I'm going to multiply by a, you know, a cube root in the denominator. And I want to do it so that we get a perfect cube as a radicand. So this is 3 of the first. Remember, I want the power on 3 to be a, a multiple of 3. I want a perfect cube. So I need to multiply by the cube root of 3 to the second power, or the cube root of 9. But I need two more threes, two more factors of three to get a perfect cube. Right? Three times three squared would be three cubed. And I do the same thing on the numerator, right? Multiply by the cube root of nine, right? Which is just three squared. I'm just writing nine up there. So now I have what I want. You know, this is the cube root of nine. one times the cube root of nine, which is just the cube root of nine in the numerator. And then the denominator, I have the cube root of 3 cubed, or 27. Right? But that's exactly what I want to have in there, though. Right? I want to have a perfect cube this time, because these are cube roots. Right. So the numerator is the cube root of 9. Right? That wouldn't simplify any further. There are no factors of 9 that are a perfect cube other than 1. And the cube root of 27 is 3. Right? 3 cubed is 27. And there you go. There's an equivalent expression to the original that has a rationalized denominator. Right? The denominator is just 3 now, not the cube root of 3. It doesn't have a radical anymore. All right, so this time with you know, the new cube roots and everything, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go back to the calculator. Let's check this out. 
So pulling up that TI-84 there. Again, whatever calculator you're using, just I hope you know how to find your cube root, enter your cube roots and fourth roots and whatnot. So let's test this out. Now the original expression was 1 divided by the cube root of 3, which is 0 0.693361274, blah, 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 right? Well, the final expression I got is the cube root of 9, you know, then divided by 3. Let's see if that gives me the same result. So the cube root of 9, and then get out of there, divided by 3. And look at that. It is the same value, right? But it doesn't have a radical in the denominator, right? It has a rationalized denominator. So great, I did a, I did a good job. All right, so let's, uh, let's try that again. So part B, right, you got the cube root of a fraction, right? So there is a denominator inside a radical, which I, you know they don't want here. So once again, I'll split this up. This is the cube root of 5 divided by the cube root of 32. All right, now. Uh, 32 is 2 to the fifth power. So let me write that. Let me show you what I'm going to do here. We have the cube root of 5 divided by, you know, the cube root. 32 is 2 to the fifth power. So I can simplify this. We have the cube root of 5 in the numerator still, and I can break this up to the cube root of 2 cubed, right, a perfect cube, times times the cube root of 2 squared. And that'll just be 2 times the cube root of 4, right, which is, again, 2 squared. And I want to get rid of that cube root of 4. I don't want a radical in the denominator. So here's where the rationalization part comes in. I'm going to multiply the numerator and denominator by a cube root. So that I get a perfect cube inside the radical and the denominator. Well, you already saw 4 is 2 squared. 2 to the second. I just need one more factor of 2 then. Right? That'll give me the cube root of 8, or the cube root of 2 cubed, right? a perfect cube. So I only need to multiply by the cube root of 2 in the denominator, and of course if you do it to the denominator you must do it to the numerator. So what I end up with here is, you know, cube root times cube root, I can put those together with the product property for radicals, that's the cube root of 10 in the numerator, and then we have 2 times the cube root of 8. Remember these two, cube root of 4 times cube root of 2, that's 2. That's the cube root of 8, which is 2. So I have 2 times 2, which is 4, in the denominator. And the denominator ends up being just 4. And there we go. And the cube root of 10 can't simplify any further. Right? There are no perfect cubes that go into 10 evenly. All right, and once again, I'll punch this in my calculator and see if it's correct. Right, see if the value of the original expression is the value of the final expression I got with the rationalized denominator. All right, so the first expression I was given, the original, was the cube root of 5 30 seconds, right, all inside the cube root. So 0 0.538, you know, 608, 6725, blah, 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 and more. And the final expression was the cube root of 10, and then this value divided by 4. Make sure the divided by 4 is not in the cube root. And, oh look, it is the same number. Fantastic. And that's all they wanted. All right, they just wanted us to you know, rationalize and simplify, of course, but you know, the numerator and denominator have no common factors. Great. All right, and then uh, for part C, we have a variable, this b. You know, 7 divided by the cube root of 49b. Well, it's a cube root, an odd root. 
So odd, you can take the odd root of any number and have it still, any, any real number, and have it still be a real number, right, positive or negative. I just don't want the denominator to be zero, right, so off to the side here I'm going to say b can't be zero, right, because if b were zero, you'd have the cube root of zero, which is zero, in the denominator of this expression, which is undefined, right, so... So b can be any positive number, b can be any negative number, but just, just not 0. All right, now 49b is 7 squared times b to the first. Right? If you think about it, right, break it down completely. 49 is 7 to the second, b is just b. So if I'm going to rationalize this right, with this q root, I'm going to multiply the numerator and denominator by a cube root. And I want to do it in such a way that the denominator radicand is a perfect cube. So again, 49 is 7 squared. So I just need one more 7 to make 7 to the third. Then b, you know, b to the first, I want to make a perfect cube. So I need two more b's. I need b squared to give me b cubed. So in order to get a perfect cube inside the radical of the denominator, I need to multiply 49b by 7b squared. That'll give me 7 cubed and b cubed, right? Perfect cubes. And if I multiply the denominator by the cube root of 7b squared, right, I need to do the same to the numerator multiplied by the cube root of 7b squared. All right, so the numerator <clears throat> is just 7 times the cube root of 7b squared. And the denominator would be the cube root of 7 cubed and b cubed. So the cube root of 7 cubed would just be 7. Cube root of b cubed would just be b. So the denominator is just simply 7b. But there's a common factor in the numerator and denominator here, right? If I divide it both by set, you know, the sevens cancel, right? These common factors of seven. So when all said and done, I end up with the cube root of seven b squared in the numerator divided by, and then just b in the denominator. Wonderful. Alright, and if you want to test this out, you know, check a few values. Just replace b with any non-zero number. An easy one would be 7. Uh, replace b with any non-zero number. 1, 2, 7, negative 5, whatever. And plug it into the original expression for b, plug it into this final expression for b, and you should see that they end up being the same value no matter what you plugged in for b. All right. Now the next question, number four, which is uh, exercise 266 from the text. Pretty similar. <coughs> Pardon me. All these cube roots, right? So I'm looking to make perfect cubes in the radical of the denominator. All right, so number one, part, uh, sorry, number four, part A, we have one divided by the cube root of 13. Now 13 is already broken down, it's already prime. So I just need to multiply that by the cube root of 13 squared, right? 13 times 13 squared will give me a perfect cube, right? 13 cubed. And I do the same to the numerator, right? Multiply by the cube root of 13 squared. Now, 13 squared is 169, right? So I'll just write that up there. All right, so the numerator is 1 times, you know, the cube root of 169. So just the cube root of 169 divided by, and then you would have the cube root of 13 cubed, which would just be 13 in the denominator, right? Now the denominator is rationalized, right? There are no more radicals. And there you go. And again, double check it, you know, with the calculator. Take 
you know, take the original expression, punch in the final expression here, and see that they give you the same value. Okay. Uh, next one, same thing. I've got a denominator inside this radical, so you know it's not rationalized. So I'm going to do the split up with the quotient property, right? This is equivalent to the cube root of 3 divided by the cube root of 128 is 2 to the 7th power. Alright, 128 is 2 to the 7th power. So it's not a perfect cube, but it can be simplified. All right, I can break this up to the cube root of 2 to the 6th. Right, there's a, a power that's a multiple of 3. That's a perfect cube. Times the cube root of 2. All right, so we end up here with the cube root of 3 in the numerator. And then the cube root of 2 to the 6th would be 2 squared. That would just be 4. All right cube root of 2 to the 6th, or the cube root of 64 would be 4, times the cube root of 2. Right, so I still have the cube root of 2 down there, and now I'm going to rationalize. All right, now I'm going to rationalize. So I'm going to multiply the numerator and denominator by, by a cube root, and I'm going to do it in such a way that I get a perfect cube in this radical in the, in the denominator. Now this has 2 to the first, right? So I need 2 more. I need 2 squared to get 2 to the third, right? To get a perfect third power. And that's just 4, right? So I'm multiplying the numerator and denominator by the cube root of 4. So now the numerator, you have the cube root of 3 times the cube root of 4, that'd be the cube root of 12 in the numerator, divided by 4 times, and then these two right, would just be 2. Right, you'd have the cube root of 8, which is just 2. So you have 4 times 2 in the denominator, which is 8. Right, so that, that initial fraction, uh, cube root of a fraction, right, the cube root of 3 1 ths is equivalent to the cube root of 12 divided by 8. Right, denominator is rationalized. All right, and I got just one more of these here, and then you know, then we get into fourth roots. All right, so here y can't be zero. Right, y can't be zero because that would make the denominator zero, but it can be anything else, right? This is a cube root. And six is two times three. Yeah, so both first power factors, 2 to the first, 3 to the first, so I'm just going to leave that as 6 to the first when I go in to talk about rationalizing. Right, I'm going to multiply the numerator and denominator by a cube root, and this is 6 to the first, so I need 6 squared to get a perfect cube, 6 to the third. Then here I have y to the second, so I need y to the first, so just y to get y to the third to get a perfect cube. And 6 squared y, that's, you know, 36y. So I'm multiplying the numerator and denominator by the cube root of 36y. Alright, so the numerator is 3 times the cube root of 36y divided by, and then down here you'd have the cube root of 6 cubed y cubed, which would just be 6y. Right, and then, the, then it's rationalized. But there's a common factor, right? The numerator and denominator have a common factor of 3. If I divide each of these by 3, you get 1 here and 2 here. So the numerator I have 1 times, you know, just the cube root of 36y divided by, and in the denominator I have 2 times y, right? 2y. Okay, great. Wonderful. And now the denominator is, you know, rationalized. No more radical. And once again, if you wish to test it out, just replace y with, you know, any non-zero number, 
and see that the value of the original expression is the same as the value of this final expression. And it should be, right, if you're doing everything correctly. Okay. So now in questions five and six, right, the next ones, we're going to be dealing with fourth roots. So now I'm going to focus on getting f perfect fourth powers in the radicals of the denominator. All right, so here's number five, which is exercise 268 from the text. So notice again, there are fourth powers, fourth roots. So let me just do this for this first one. We have one divided by the fourth root. Four is two squared, right? Four is two to the second power. And I'm trying to make, you know, when I when I rationalize a perfect fourth power in this radical of the denominator. So I'm going to mul I'm going to be multiplying the numerator and denominator by a fourth root. Now notice that you know this radicand here has two to the second, two factors of two. So I just need another two squared to give me two to the fourth. That's a perfect fourth power. And then I can simply you know, simplify the fourth root. And that's just four. So I'm multiplying the numerator and denominator by the fourth root of two squared or the fourth root of four. Right? So now the numerator is the fourth root of four. Right? One times the fourth root of four. Divided by the fourth root of two to the fourth power, right? two to the fourth power, which is 16. That, that is a perfect fourth power. That's what we're looking for now in these denominator radicals. Right, it's a perfect fourth power, two to the fourth. Right, we're looking to the fourth, to the eighth, to the twelfth, right? you know, things where the powers are a multiple of four. So we have the fourth root of four in the numerator divided by, and then the fourth root of 16 is 2, right? That was 2 to the fourth power. And there you go. There's that original expression written, written as an equivalent number with a rationalized denominator. All right, and then because it's a new kind of root, I'm going to do just this one here, right? just this one problem with the calculator. We'll test it. All right, so the original expression I was given was 1 divided by, and hopefully you know how to find your fourth roots. Right, here you have to hit number five and enter the, enter the fourth root, enter the index of four. One divided by the fourth root of four is 0 0.707, uh, 106.7812, da 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 All right, now my final expression was the fourth root of four in the numerator, divided by, and then two in the denominator, right, and make sure that that two is not in a radical. And look at that, it is the same number, but with a rationalized denominator, right, excellent. Okay, and again, I'll, I'll, I'll leave it to you to check the rest on your own. All right, so part B, same stuff. Um, I got a fraction in, inside a radical. We don't want that because that means there's a, there's a denominator in a radical. All right, so I'm going to split this up to the fourth root of nine divided by the fourth root of thirty-two. Which which remember thirty-two is two to the fifth. So I can break that up to two to the fourth times two. So this this breaks up, this simplifies pretty easily. This is the fourth root of nine divided by two times the fourth root of two. Right? Because we can break this up to the fourth root of sixteen times the fourth root of two, so just two times the fourth root of two. Alright, and now I'm looking to make perfect fourth power in the denominator radical. And I'm going to multiply the numerator and denominator by a fourth root. Now notice in this radical in the denominator, there's two to the first, two to the one power, only one factor of two. I'm looking to make fourth powers here, so I need three more. I need two cubed to make two to the fourth down there. Right? 
So that's 8. Right? Uh, so, so I'm multiplying the numerator and denominator by the fourth root of 8. So that gives me in the numerator, fourth root of 9 times fourth root of 8 would be the fourth root of 72, which doesn't simplify any further. That's 3 squared times 2 cubed. There are no perfect fourth powers that go into 72 evenly. Divided by 2 times 2, right? Divided by 4. This would be 2 times the fourth root of 16. Right. The fourth root of 2 times fourth root of 8 would be the fourth root of 16, which would be 2, and then 2 times 2 is 4. And again, test it out. You know, you can use your calculators. See that the fourth root of 9 30 seconds is the same as the fourth root of 72 divided by 4. Right. Great. All right, and then uh, this part C got another expression with a variable. Now be careful, right? This is an even root, a fourth root. So if we want to deal with real numbers right, and use all these properties, the quotient property, product property, whatever for radicals, I need to deal with real numbers. So the radicand can't be negative. Now 9's not negative, so x cubed can't be negative, meaning x can't be negative. So x has to be a positive number here. And if x is positive, that means we probably, you know, we don't have to worry about writing absolute value symbols. Remember, normally, when you're simplifying even roots, you know, you got to worry about, do I need an absolute value symbol at the end or not? You know, because they're asking for the positive even root with those symbols. But here, I'm assuming x has to, you know, x has to be a positive number here in order to be dealing with reals. So I won't need to worry about absolute values. Uh, okay, now again, I'm going to rewrite this radicand here, fact, totally factored. This is 6 divided by the fourth root. 9 is 3 squared, right? 3 to the second times, you know, x to the third. And I'm looking to make, you know, perfect fourth powers when I multiply, you know, and try to rationalize the denominator. So I'm going to multiply the numerator and denominator by, you know, a fourth root but I'm going to do it in such a way that we have perfect fourth powers in the denominator. Well, this first radicand has 3 to the second, so I need two more. So another 3 to the second to give me 3 to the fourth, perfect fourth power. And this radicand has x to the third, so I just need one more. I just need x to the first to get x to the fourth, right, to get a perfect fourth power. And that's 9x, right? So I'm, mu I'm multiplying the numerator and denominator by the fourth root of 9x. All right, and that'll leave me with the following. So in the numerator, I'll have 6 times the fourth root of 9x divided by, and then here I'd have the fourth root of 3 to the fourth, x to the fourth, so just 3x. And again, no need for absolute value symbols. We already said that x has to be a positive number here in order to plug into the original expression. And then I'm seeing a common factor. Right? You know, 6 and 3 have a common factor of 3. If I divide by 3, I got 2 there, 1 there. Divide both those by 3. So I'm left with 2 times the fourth root of 9x in the numerator and just x in the denominator but the denominator is rationalized, right? There's no more radical, no more fourth root down there. Okay. And then once again, you know, if you want to check it out and want to test it out with a calculator, plug in a value of x that's positive. You know, take plug in 1, plug in 5, plug in the square root of 3, whatever you want. Just plug in whatever you want for a, a po plug in a positive number for x in the original expression and this final expression and hopefully you'll see that they end up with the same value. All right, I got just one more page of this. All right, number six, same thing. Everything has a fourth root in a denominator. And this is number 270 in the text. All right, so the first one there, you got one divided by the fourth root of eight. Now eight, Right, 8 is 2 to the third, so it's almost a fourth power. Right. So in order to make a fourth power in the denominator, 
we just need to multiply by the fourth root of two. Right? That'll give me two to the fourth. So I'm multiplying the numerator and denominator by the fourth root of two. So that gives me the fourth root of two in the numerator divided by, and then the fourth root of 16, all right, eight times two, which is just two in the denominator. Right. No radical, rationalized. So the fourth root of two divided by two should be the same value as one divided by the fourth root of eight. And I leave it to you to check that with a calculator. Okay, uh, next. Got another denominator inside a radical. So let's split this up with the quotient property. This is the fourth root of 27. Now 27 is 3 cubed, but I'm not trying to rationalize the numerator. So, but, but that can't be simplified any further. There are no perfect fourth powers that go into 27. Now 128, we saw this earlier, that's 2 to the seventh power. Right, that's 2 to the seventh. Um, so you could simplify this if you wish. Now this time I would do something a little different. Um, just to show you that there's multiple ways of doing things. You know, 2 to the 7th is almost a 4th power. Right? 2 to the 8th would be a 4th power. Right? Any, any, anything with a power that's a multiple of 4 is a perfect 4th power. So I just need one more 2. So I'm just going to rationalize right now. Multiply by the 4th root of 2. And that'll give me 2 to the 8th, which is a perfect 4th power in the denominator. And do the same to the numerator, right? Multiply the numerator and denominator by the 4th root of 2. All right, so numerator, 4th root of 27 times the 4th root of 2 would be the 4th root of 54, which doesn't have a perfect 4th power that goes into it, so that's totally as simple as that, that radical's getting. Now the 4th root... Right, the fourth root of 2 to the 8th would be 2 squared, would be 4. Right, you'd have 4 in the denominator. Right. And there you go. That's it. All right, now me personally, you, know, you saw me do it earlier, I like simplifying the radical before rationalizing, but you can rationalize first and then simplify, it doesn't matter. Right. As long as you're doing things properly. Now, part C. So far in all the part C's, we haven't had to use absolute value symbols, but here we do. Notice that the only value B can't be is zero. All right, I, I, it's an even root, so the radicand can't be negative, but you know, B squared whether b is positive or b is negative, b squared is not going to be negative, right? It's something to an even power, a real number to an even power. So the only value that b can't be replaced with is 0, because that'll make me divide by 0. Right? That'll have a denominator of 0. So b is not 0 means that b can be positive, b can be negative. <coughs> so I may need to use absolute value symbols here with this you know, simplification of even roots. All right, so let's start. Well, first I'll do the factorization here. We have 16 divided by the fourth root. 64 is 2 to the sixth power. And then b squared is just, you know, b squared. And now I'll do the rationalization this time. I know you can simplify this, but just like in the previous problem, I'll do the rationalization first. So I'm multiplying the numerator and denominator by a fourth root. And I would like per perfect fourth powers in the radical and the denominator. Two to the sixth, you know, I need two to the eighth is a perfect fourth power. So I need two squared. I need two more twos. And then b squared, same thing. I need another b squared to get b to the fourth. So I'm multiplying the numerator and denominator here by the fourth root of, you know, four b squared which, you know, B can still be positive or negative, and this is fine, right? You know, you still have a positive, you still have a non-negative number underneath the fourth root. All right. So now the numerator is, you know, 16 times the fourth root of 4B squared divided by 
Now remember the fourth root of 2 to the eighth would be 2 squared, so that'd be 4. And then the fourth root of b to the fourth would be the absolute value of b. Notice the absolute value symbols. Now the reason I'm using these is because b can be negative in this problem. But when we see the fourth root symbol, that, that, remember that's asking for the the positive root. So if I left if I left that as just b, it would be incorrect whenever b is negative. All right. So that's why I need absolute value of b around this. And then I notice some common factors. Right. Four goes into sixteen four times, and here we go. All right. So this ends up being equal to four times the fourth root of 4b squared divided by the absolute value of b. Now, as I've said in earlier videos, you know, very often textbooks, they, they, for some reason, they skirt the rules a bit. They say, ah, don't worry about writing the absolute value symbols. You know, let's you know, let's assume b is a positive number. You know, if b were strictly a positive number, uh, then this would simplify to four times the fourth root of four b squared divided by just b, right? and this would be totally fine here. Right? Um, so again, this is a big if, right? If for some reason they told you, hey, let's just assume that the variables represent positive numbers, you know, then you wouldn't need the absolute value symbols. But you should always be, uh, I, I personally want you to pay attention to the rules. I want you to know, hey, when am I supposed to be using absolute value symbols when simplifying these even roots? You should know that stuff. Um, but just also know that, you know, there are some, some instructors out there who don't care or some books where they'll tell you, assume that the variables are positive. That didn't happen in this book, right? You go back to the, if you go back to the assignment exercises I'm doing, you go back to that text. See, it just says in the following exercises, rationalize the denominator. It doesn't say anything about assuming that the variables are represent positive numbers, right? So, so you should be using absolute value symbols here. Okay? Alright, and that's it. All right, so I'm hoping that watching me go through these six questions with all their parts, hoping that helps you out when you're asked to, you know, divide and rationalize denominators with a single term, right? Notice that every single one of these denominators had one term, right? We'll get into two term denominators uh, in the next video. Alright, and thank you very much for watching.